Welcome to part 2 people. Uh, this is my tutorial on creating a fluid grid uh, layouts, responsive layouts and in part number 1 uh, let me quickly reiterate what all we had done. We had created a multi-screen layout which would respond to the width change so as we used to drop the width uh, let's say from the desktop size to the tablet size and then switch over to the uh, mobile size the um, three divisions that we had under the header would automatically adjust they would be fluid uh, in fact uh, once again let me show you a multi screen preview uh, this is the way things were so this is how the web page would look on a smartphone this is how it would look uh, on a tablet and this is the desktop view and all this was made possible uh, through a boilerplate.css uh, cascading style sheet file that uh, and a respond.min.js file now these two files are responsible for uh, having uh, you know a consistent look uh, across various browsers and uh, browser versions S also uh, I made certain modifications to yet another CSS file that I had named as responsive CSS and uh, I had given background colors to the body as Burleywood to the header as beach to div1 as bisque uh, to division2 or div2 as blank element and div3 as wheat okay uh, people this responsive.css is a key uh, file although uh, there are recommendations that we should not touch this uh, file and we should have our CSS separate uh, although it's recommended but you can very carefully uh, make a there's nothing stopping you from um, you know making adjustments out here although it's recommended to have it as a separate file so I made adjustments out here I created a rule for the body uh, had created another rule for uh, the h1 and the p elements uh, zeroed on on the margin and uh, created a 15 px 15 uh, px of uh, uh, padding all around okay uh, there used to be uh, okay now again uh, let's talk about this uh, responsive CSS file um, now this file has three uh, media queries uh, for the uh, mobile platform for the smartphones for the tablets and for the uh, desktop and they are out here so what happens is when this CSS file is read automatically the um, correct CSS is picked up it's read and it's executed and that happens through media queries okay so see there's a media query out here which makes sure that it affects only screens uh, with a you know a minimum width of 481 px so tablet layout 481 to 768 and uh, there's another bit you know uh, of CSS out here uh, but this affects only the uh, desktop desktops uh, 769 px to a max of 1323px okay so this responsive uh, CSS file is actually divided into three sections the up, upper half uh, affects the smartphones the middle half affects the uh, the tablets and the uh, lower half uh, affects only the uh, desktops uh, simply because we, we have three media queries out here so depending on uh, the media query uh, a different uh, set of CSS is executed for a specific device only okay now in part number two I wanted to show you how I can actually make uh, this word lorem ipsum which is actually uh, an h1 element uh, appear differently in different uh, widths or on different devices like tablets and smartphones vis a vis the desktop we'll see the size dropping as we shift our view from the desktop to the tablet to the smartphone so let's get these changes uh, done quickly okay um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a rule out here for h1 once again and I'm gonna set the font size 
to a 1.6 uh, EMS, right? Uh, but this affects only the uh, smartphone uh, view. As you can see, uh, as you saw out here, the uh, you know the, uh, the size of the H1 suddenly dropped. The default is to it's, it's dropped to uh, 1.6. Now, what happens when you <coughs> make the change to the smartphone or the mobile platform CSS? It uh, cascades or it ripples across uh, to the tablet and the desktop view as well. Okay, which means that I'll need to have a different set of CSS or a different uh, H1 rule for the tablet and for the desktops too. Uh, so let's see how I affect the change. I'm going to go out here in line number 87 and where I need to write uh, the CSS for the uh, tablet layout. But this time I'm going to make sure that the font size for the H1 element is 1.8 but for the um, desktop view it's gonna be the default 2 EMS okay and now let me say save all and uh, let's take up a preview in my browser Chrome Google Chrome let's uh, see the h1 element drop its size as I shift from one view to the other okay so uh, this very clearly is the desktop view people I'm gonna slowly show you the shift in size uh, of the h1 element as I go from one device size to the other so I'm gonna sh very soon uh, shift to the tablet view so this is the tablet layout people so notice the lorem ipsum suddenly you know drop its size there okay and let's now get inside the smartphone the mobile uh, layout and you'll see the lorem ipsum h1 out here uh, drop its size further there it dropped itself by 0.2 EMS there a subtle change out there there right so th that that's happened uh, perfectly very good now what I wish to do is next up people I want to have my images drop uh, have images included in division 1 and uh, division 2 div 1 div 2 and let's see how they scale up or scale down as I shift my width so I'm gonna have to write one more rule and this is gonna be gonna be for the mobile uh, as it's gonna ripple down to the tablet and the desktop too. too. Uh, you see you write a, uh, the CSS for the mobile platform and it ripples down but the reverse is not true okay so I'm gonna say image and I'm gonna say max width w i d t h sorry d t h I'm gonna set it to twenty percent now what will happen is uh, that the image will now become scalable uh, and will uh, the maximum size will never be uh, more than 20% of the total available width of the div so let's prove my point let me first save the file and then let me go to the source code under index.html uh, I also need to go out here drop in a picture I'm in the uh, mobile size view or the mobile layout by the way and let me get in uh, two images one by one so I'm this is my local site folder these are my local files I'm gonna pull in the first image drop it uh, let's say drop it out here just above the paragraph tag in division one and let me give it an alternate text okay similarly I'm gonna push in the second image 
out here in division 2 just before the paragraph starts this is flash flash pro flash professional let me say okay all right at the same time momentarily let me go back to the responsive css file mm, let me locate the uh, rule that i just wrote for the image i would want to add something out there so yep out here i'm gonna say uh, a padding i want to add some padding of let's say 10 px all around the image and i'm gonna make sure that it floats to the left so that's a float left that will ensure that the text wraps itself around the image okay there are a few extra lines out here that i'm gonna delete and out here okay so Excuse me. So this was the uh, you know rule for the image that I wrote uh, for the uh, mobile platform or the smartphone uh, layout, and uh, this CSS is going to ripple down to the tablet and the desktop view too. Okay, the reverse is not true. You you can't write the CSS or you can't have a media query for the desktop and have it ripple up, but it can ripple down always okay so let's say save all let's take up a preview in google chrome to see the changes so i need to be in the uh, index.html file first before i can do that so let's take up a preview in google chrome okay so notice as i uh, crunch or collapse the size as i reduce the width see the changes in the size of the h1 the images etc and here you can very clearly see that the you know the max width for this logo or this image uh, is not uh, beyond 20% of the total width available because of the min width, uh, the max width property that I'd used. Okay, and <coughs> now people notice the size of the H1 element lorem ipsum, which is highlighted. Also notice uh, how fluid the uh, web page is. Notice that the size of the uh, images is uh, dropping and it's dropping further and further okay now I'm in the tablet view and very soon I'm gonna enter the smartphone view cool right okay so you saw that uh, not only are these images uh, gonna scale up and down as you adjust the width the lorem ipsum h1 element out here scales up and down too as we shift our uh, layout from the mobile to the tablet to the uh, desktop view okay and uh, the padding out here that you see this this padding is two percent so again in terms of percentage all right so people uh, this concludes part two of this very useful tutorial i hope so on uh, fluid grid layout in dreamweaver cs6 so i hope you enjoyed uh, this one a lot learned a lot from this is a revelation is a great very strong feature uh, of dreamweaver and as i said probably the best uh, thing that ever happened to dreamweaver i hope you'll keep coming back for more tutorials you have a good day bye bye peace